I'm photographer David Dushman, and this is Vision is Better, a sometimes weekly podcast about the craft and art of photography. Welcome here. Hey, welcome to episode 46 of Vision is Better. I am your ever faithful host, David Dushman, and today I want to talk to you about rotting walrus flipper. I was sitting with, uh, with my friend Paul Nicklin recently, very recently, in fact, and uh, talking to him about what it has taken to get to where he is. Paul, if you already don't know him, uh, Paul is a National Geographic photographer. In fact, even if you do know him, he's still a National Geographic photographer, an extremely talented individual, an extremely hardworking individual. And I asked him about his path to becoming a National Geographic photographer. How did he get to where he is? And um, this was in the context of something completely different. Uh, it just sort of the conversation came out and he was telling stories. And, um, and one of the stories he told was about the... Uh, uh, he spent a, a long period of time up in the Canadian Arctic. He's, he lived there since he was a kid and has this uh, ongoing love affair with the place. And it shows in his work. Um, but he was up there at one point, once he had decided that he wanted to sort of uh, make a transition from being a biologist to being a photographer and using his, his photography to tell the stories of uh, you know climate change and uh, conservation in the high Arctic and now around the world. And, uh, and he was sitting there on the edge of this ice flow, uh, camped out for weeks and weeks, and he had burned through his food and, uh, and had nothing left to eat. And these, uh, these hunters came by and took pity on him and gave him this big hunk, this huge walrus flipper, which, uh, which I, I guess uh, you just cut off pieces and eat raw. Um, I don't know. And uh, it over time, uh, sort of progressively fermented. Um, those, those of us who know better would call it rotting walrus flipper. And uh, Paul lived on this rotting walrus flipper for three weeks or so uh, while he, uh, you know, while it progressively got rottier and rottier. And I tell you that story because it is indicative of someone who wants something so badly that they are willing to uh, to swallow something that is increasingly horrific uh, because they want the thing that they want more than they want to avoid the uh, the obstacles and the discomfort and whether you want to do this as a uh, as a professional or not uh, I don't think is the point although certainly this applies to both the craft of photography is uh, certainly I think you have to have a measure of talent. I think you have to have a measure of taste. You have to know how to tell stories. You have to uh, be curious. There's a lot that goes on in the mind and heart of a photographer more than the ability to press a button. However, I do think very often that we give much more um, credit to the initial role of talent then maybe we should. Now, I'm not saying that Paul Nicklin is not an incredibly talented, beautiful human being. Absolutely, he is. But I think talent is unlocked and uncovered increasingly by hard work and by the commitment to that hard work. Talking to Paul, he said he dreamed of being a National Geographic photographer. He felt like those were his people. And the first people he talked to sort of didn't agree with him and said, no, we're not. And when he did his first assignment, he burned through this first assignment in total fear that he was going to screw it up and that he wasn't going to do very well. And his first criticism over that initial assignment was not terribly positive. And of course, he had contractual obligations to fulfill, and so he kept working for them. But it's not that he got to a certain point and then became a National Geographic photographer. He went in as a, national, a new National Geographic photographer, and National Geographic became the school that, uh, through a lot of hard work and a lot of commitment, uh, that he went through to uncover the talent that he clearly has so much of. And I wonder if we posit, uh, we position uh, talent and hard work as though they are two different things and it's either one or the other when I think talent and hard work, uh, they work in connection with each other. The, the hard work, the commitment to, um, to less than savory things and difficult processes is the thing that uncovers that talent or maybe even Maybe it polishes it, maybe it builds on it, I'm not 100% sure, but I do know this. I don't know anyone working in photography, whether they're just doing it for their art, 
uh, or whether they're doing it professionally. And by just, I don't mean uh, merely as though it's a secondary thing to doing it professionally. I don't think that at all. Being a professional just means you make money at it and that's neither here nor there. But either way, whether you're doing it for the love of it or for the love of it and to feed your family, you need the commitment. You need to get through the hard times. You need to be willing to swallow some uh, less than savory things, uh, less than easy steps on your journey in order to get there. And so I was having this conversation with Paul and to be honest, part of what went through my mind was, yeah, that's uh, talent aside, that's why he's where he is and I'm where I am. I have chosen certain things that I can swallow on the way to uh, to where I want to go. And there are certain things that I, that I can't. And maybe uh, fermenting walrus flipper is not one of those things that I would choose to swallow. Um, maybe it wouldn't naturally come up on my journey. But there have been things. This guy is just exceptionally good at what he does. He's getting better and better. And he'll be embarrassed uh, with me, you know, singing his praises this way because he's a lovely, humble, gentle human being. Uh, but the fact is he he's just astonishingly talented and an astonishing, this is a hard word to say, a really hardworking guy. And I don't think it's a coincidence that two, the two things go hand in hand. So here is my encouragement to you that if you're, uh, if you're still at that point where you're frustrated, you're finding the photography challenging, maybe you're just getting to that point where you, your technique is finally uh, not your major challenge. That's not your big challenge. Your big challenge is uh, matching your technique to your vision or uncovering your vision or developing your vision even further. Well, I have good news and bad news. The good news is uh, you, you're almost there. The bad news is where there is is just like the tip of the iceberg because mastery is not a destination. It's not a place we get to and go, yes, I'm here. It's a place where we get to go, yes, I'm here and realize we're just at the next train stop on a long journey and mastery is actually a process. It's a, uh, it's a, a pilgrimage of sorts rather than a place that we arrive to. So the good news is uh, you're on your way. The bad news is it's tough for all of us and it's going to remain tough, hopefully, because hopefully you're always just beyond your comfort zone. When I was writing uh, A Beautiful Anarchy recently, um, two, two years ago recently, and, uh, and and sort of starting to think through some of these things, this idea that the magic happens just outside of our comfort zone, just beyond the, you know, where the, the voice of fear really kicks in, beyond where you're starting to think, this is really hard, I'm not sure I can do this. Well, if a guy like Paul Nicklin can sit on the, uh, the edge of the ice floe uh, in the Canadian Arctic eating fermenting walrus flipper, uh, my question is, you know, what's your fermenting walrus flipper? What's mine? And am I willing to swallow it in pursuit of something that I want even more than I want to avoid this, you know, this nasty little morsel of rotting flesh? Um, uh, this is the kind of thing that makes me uh, kind of want to dabble with vegetarianism, to be, to be frank. But we all have things in our lives that are going to be challenging. And remember, the magic starts just beyond that point. It never starts within the comfort zone. The magic is always outside it. So again, my encouragement to you, if you're asking yourself, well, what does this have to do with photography? It has everything to do with photography because you need the commitment. You need to be willing to punch through when things get difficult. And you need patience. You need patience when you're waiting for the moment or for the light or for whatever it is technically to kind of click. But you also need patience long term. Remember to nurture the artist that you are and speak gently to that person because uh, it's not easy for any of us. And, uh, and if you're doing this as a living, of course, the application of this idea gets even further because many of us are not primarily entrepreneurs. I happen to be. I love the entrepreneurial pursuit, but some people don't. And it's a challenge. And uh, if you want to get there, wherever there is, there's going to be a hunk of rotting walrus flipper waiting for you. And the question is, are you going to swallow it and move on? Uh, or are you going to say no thank you and turn away from that challenge? Because nothing good, and I'm starting to sound like my mother, but nothing good uh, ever comes without some kind of challenge and without some kind of obstacle. And uh, 
Well, there you have it. Enjoy your rotting walrus flipper. Uh, if you have not, I'm going to put this in the show notes. If you have not seen Paul Nicklin's TED Talk about his uh, his work in the Canadian and, and the Arctic in general, in the polar regions, uh, specifically, and he talks, and this is not in Canada, this is in, in Antarctica, he talks about this encounter with a leopard seal that uh, that if you knew Paul at all, you, you might know him from this TED Talk. I'm going to put that link into the show notes because I really think you need to get... Uh, to get a hold of that video and take a look at it, especially the last 10 minutes. It's just an exceptional story about this encounter with, between Paul and this leopard seal. And of course, you only get to places like that after you've paid your dues and you've put your time in. And this is what makes Paul and uh, all of the photographers that you love and respect, this is what puts them where they are um, in terms of their journey. Uh, it's the hard work. You pay your dues and it's the commitment and the um, mm, rotting walrus flipper. I did this episode just so I could say those things. Rotting walrus flipper. Thanks so much for joining me. Remember to subscribe on the YouTube channel. Don't hesitate to ask your questions or leave comments. We'll see you next time. Remember, gear is good, but rotting walrus flipper is better. But vision's better. Take care. <laughs>